Navigating life is tough. I think there was a part of me that always wanted to look myself in the eye and be able to define myself or how I showed up in the world. To define myself by my own terms and be satisfied. Like all of the toxic positivity you see in the world, I would put these words on myself and a smile and said it was all manifested. And I think you and I both know that it's just not 100% realistic. If you're anyone like me that has lifted every rock of unhealed wound that you have inside of you, faced all of the traumas, and have done all of the standing works to be a healed person, you do it so much that you start to resent it. I think the more life lived and with more lessons learned, I regrettably find that to fully define myself is really hard. Especially with the unpredictability of life, I found myself constantly contradicting myself. One after another, mistake after lesson after another mistake and lesson learned. I find one ideology and theory that rings true until the winds have changed along with the frequency of my mind and all of the things that once sounded great now are completely unbearable to hear. And I've handled certain situations poorly that I've read and read about that I knew how to navigate, but it triggered me so well, it just trickled me back into the version of myself that I was before. There was a sign of weakness. There was a lack of control. I'm human and these things are going to happen, but the guilt and the shame that I feel because it's happened have left me in a rut. Instead of this mistake giving me humility, all it did was give me shame. Because in my mind, I have a responsibility to show up as my best self 100% of the time. This is not an expectation that anyone put on me, it's just what I feel like I should be doing myself. As you can tell, navigating your late 20s is complete madness. I have less than a month left of my 20s. It's a madness in a way that's terribly genius and liberating and profound and scary, but also very cutesy and stylish. And I think I'm writing it all down to process it because I, I think I truly do have a love for the life that I have, even in all of its imperfections and the rigid road of the journey that I'm on. I can truly say that I feel blessed for where my life has taken me so far. I say all of this to say, Unfortunately, through all of the self-development that I think I've consumed over the year and a half of me having this journey on YouTube, unfortunately, I can say I, I lost a part of myself in it through all of the constant trying to be the best version of myself. I lost my ability to be human and authentic, raw, and just genuinely me. Yeah. I want to be my best self, but I'm also mistaking it for being perfect. And I think something awakened in me one day where someone asked me what words I can use to define myself. And there was a moment where it just started to feel really corny and unnatural, you know? It's like, I'm like, okay, girl, um, I am strong and I'm fragile, obviously. I'm vocally liberated and in my truth, but also socially reserved and don't have really many friends. And all of these things are true, but at the same time, it's constantly changing and I really don't know because I'm at a point in my life where I realize, although I've learned a lot in the years of being 20, I realize that I still don't know a lot. And I'm tired of trying to act like I know a lot because I really don't. And I don't think anyone does. I think we're just trying to do the best that we can with what we know and hopefully be of service with what we got, you know. But bottom line, I had to rescue myself from setting such high expectations on myself. I was like a cat that got caught too high up in a tree and got mad at everyone else for not being able to make it here and realize I'm really not doing the best job at being here either because I don't know how to get down and really didn't nobody tell me to get my ass up there in the fucking first place. You know, I hope that makes sense because that's the only way that I can describe it in my mind of setting those high expectations for myself. Like, I think it was, I didn't want to be anything if I couldn't do it well. 
So I wanted to be the best child, the best artist, the best podcast host, the best YouTuber I could ever be, the best dancer, the best instructor, like all of these things. And it was ultimately unachievable and inauthentic because it wasn't necessarily real. And the more I tried to be perfect, the more terrible of a job I was doing at all of the things. I had to take a step back and realize why am I trying to be the perfect person for a large group of people that constantly disappoint me? Why am I striving to be perfect for people I'll just wind up disappointing anyway? Because that's a part of life. And I'm always feeling like a dog trying to catch its tail, being this perfect person, turning in a complete circle, but doing it so gracefully, I realize, like, I just have to stop. And a lot of doing all of that work has allowed me to build a lot of resentment in myself and in people. And I've carried a lot of disappointments that I didn't necessarily have to if I didn't set the expectations so high on myself and on others and I needed to learn humility I needed to learn you know what authenticity means really to me and stop trying to show up as this perfect person so that more people would listen I think genuinely if they listen if they don't that's not really my that's not really the point. I think it's just to be as authentic as you possibly can. And hopefully through that, people will want to listen because it allows them to be parts within themselves that they feel they have abandoned. Sorry, I'm rambling. I'm talking a lot. Let me get into the actual episode. Bye bye bye. I wanted to make this episode to get out of this rut that I've been feeling and just talk through some things that I wanted you guys to be a witness of. And maybe what I'm sharing will help you to remind you to own the mark you leave in the world and live by your own design and make decisions that make you feel okay first. So we aren't susceptible to the conforming to other people's ideas of who they think we should be. I wanted to share dialogue about the importance of owning your truth and honoring who you are and staying confident in that choice no matter how others perceive it and the consequences that come because they will come. Welcome to the Ron Half Podcast where we get real and then some. I'm your host Jasmine Siri and every week I will speak on topics that align with reprogramming the subconscious mind. I share my experiences and discuss how I navigate life consciously so we can reach higher heights and deeper dimensions of the mind to reach our goals from a healed and open place together. So let's get started. Being a young person often sometimes means to be complicit, to be easily molded, and being a millennial is like you're caught in this in-between era where we just unconsciously listened to the generations older and ignorantly made ourselves in their image, and the more we cut away at ourselves to fit their image, the less we feel right. And then we look to the side and see a completely different younger generation that does not care at all. And you see the liberation and the freedom and the amazing ways that they can express themselves without the confidence in their mind of this programming that didn't exist to them like it did for us before. And so you start to build resentment in this completely new world for never setting boundaries all those years ago and now that you're jaded you start to put the same borders on others as an attempt to cage them so you feel less alone and this cycle of the aged and bitter kills the creativity and the authenticity of a person even people older than me are slowly awakening to recognize that maybe the ways they've been thinking and viewing what is respectful or important have been pretty narrow. The other day I had to explain to a boomer that they are not obligated to hear a yes ma'am from me because my response to their questions was all they were owed, not the decorations around the response that feed their ego. And the absence of those decorative words are not an insult to their wisdom and their experience in this world. 
And if you're basing your worth and respect on a yes ma'am, no ma'am, in my opinion, your respect needs stronger foundations to stand on. But anyways, as you can tell, I'm not necessarily the best daughter or debutante. I genuinely feel the multiple lives my soul has existed in brings everybody to the same level as me. And unfortunately, that rubs people the wrong way. Especially people older than me, because they assume it's an arrogance. But I'm just honestly tired of pretending that age matters. You can be 25 years my senior and still be an immature buffoon. And I've met trees with clearer wisdom, better stories, and just more common sense than some older people that I've met. Anyway, I think sometimes we get in our rut because still inside who we are, who we truly are, when we are in our comfortable alone time or our most raw and authentic moments, is easily left malnourished. Because of the titles and the responsibilities that befall us when we decide to persevere through life, it's like we live in one way just to die in some other ways. Some ways we can lay to rest with pride. Other ways haunt us deep inside with regret. And I'm more curious about that version, the latter. That small voice inside of us we often sacrifice at other people's request that waits patiently for us to choose it, honor its needs, waits for us to let it breathe and be without shame. When do we allow ourselves the privilege of authenticity enough to claim it in every avenue of our lives? Does growing older 100% mean to grow out of our youth-like courage to be authentic? Or is it just a coiled voyage back to ourselves? Does authenticity come with age or come back to us when we're finally wise and brave enough to strip the layers of programming to get back to who we always were? Luckily, the fountain of youth that sits in the present gifts us with a choice to acknowledge and use the authentic voice at our own free will. The challenge is, some of us get so consumed with every move we've made in the past to ignore it that we forget we have the power to make a different choice just as simply and as easily as the other choices we've made before to ignore it. You can wake up tomorrow and decide to choose a life that is more authentic to you, but will you honor it with consistency if nobody understands? Will you choose your own authenticity even if it means that you are completely on your own? And I think that's when it gets hard. I think that's when you begin to get in your rut. So many times I thought choosing myself and being and speaking and using my voice to be honest and stand up for myself was what made me special. I didn't realize how much trouble I would get into with people that were just not ready to face maybe the consequence of their unawareness. I think when you are the bringer of change, the, the light, the, the person that is going to say the hard thing, we have to be okay with everything that it comes with. It is very lonely. We say the hard things, and we bring a fresh perspective to the surface that incites real passion, frustration, and friction. Some of us do the work to heal for the people in our lives that simply despise us, and it's very lonely. But that is the harsh truth of the evolution of consciousness. That is the reality of the curse breaker. That is also a part of the job we chose when we decided we wanted to come here to evolve. When I think about the civil rights awakening, it wasn't met with open arms and acceptance. I think when we are taking action with the willpower to change the ways we show up into the world, through an authentic truth that gives us ownership of our power that is so new, of course there is resistance. I don't know any person who successfully changed the ways we view the world that wasn't dragged through the mud for it. So be encouraged. Always. Keep your ears to things that nourish your faith and take it as a sign that you're doing things as you should. 
So if you, like myself, are in the muddiness of your story, I would like to remind you that the mud is fertile soil. And in your attempt to own your truth and own yourself before you are anyone else's, maybe in ways your entire lineage has never seen before, sometimes the bravery of our lives is used to plant the seed of a tree that we may never enjoy the shade of. But it's knowing that we are only one part of a large story, and it's our job to play our part, and no part is more larger than the other, or more important than the other, because time has no favorites, obviously. Just like the House of Dragon, I think about Damon finally seeing his part in the prophecy of fire and ice, and after knowing his fate, it brought him humility and even more fealty to Rhaenyra. And I, like, I'm sorry, I am I love Game of Thrones, I love the House of Dragon, I just wish the ending gave us a little bit more something, um, but I, honestly I love kind of geeking out about that story, about that saga. Anyway, something that you have made a sacrifice to do. I'll be honest, I think because I made a choice to dissenter men from my life and choose myself so that I can follow my own divine path, it has ultimately given me a life with very few conformities. There are ways that I have not yet lived in sacrifice that grants me a different level of audacity when I choose myself and choose to go after the things that I want. I can't make excuses for the ways I show up because if I'm an adult and I'm only responsible for myself and the woman that I am and the energy that I give off and attract and keep in my life, when the slate is so blank and there's a vastness in the space of authenticity that you can reside in, how do you know that you're keeping ownership of yourself the primary objective in different areas of your life? I think one, I had to accept that my authentic self and taking ownership to be my own woman may not look cool or aesthetic and I'm okay with that. Trying to be this creator, this YouTuber is not a luxurious life. It's a lot of work and I think when I started I had this fantasy of what I thought being a creator would be and then I realized it took me further and further away the deeper that I got into the structure and the creativity that I needed to have to do this consistently. There's always an idea or a fantasy that you have in your head about pursuing something and then you're in the middle of it and you realize that you're only reaching the surface of the level of work that you have to do. This is... Something that I'm okay with, something that really inspires me to be a different version of myself, but when you're constantly being hit with ways that you need to improve, different ways that you can be better, different topics to bring to the surface, all the while trying to keep your life together and going through your life changes, it can be hard. And I think there's so many good looking lives out there that we can easily find ourselves trying to take steps of ownership in someone else's life or how someone else owns in their life. And you will know that because it will feel empty. If a lot of your desires stem from envy and not necessarily your soul thoughts and desires, you may not be necessarily walking in your authentic truth, but the really attractive authentic truth of someone else. I think ownership requires alone time and getting to know yourself in ways that actually take time investment. For example, journaling. I know it can seem very 90s and Moesha-esque and sometimes not serious to give your mind the ability to just let it rip, but I'm telling you, your soul is dying to speak to you through the practice of journaling. I think many of us like the idea of saying, okay, I'm going to journal, but we aren't sure when we should do it or when doing it is actually helpful for what's going on in our lives. For example, I journal when I'm receiving flashbacks in my head of a situation that didn't work out for me or didn't serve me or didn't necessarily mirror the best version of myself. 
when I release the words to a paper or my notes in my phone, I do that to find a place for it to go that's outside of my mind. That's something that's really helpful for me because the thoughts can almost kind of seem a little dangerous and I want to make sure that I'm having an outlet because, you know, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I... I try to work out, I try to do other things to soothe my mind, but at the end of the day, my only vice is the fact that I kind of write my words. I also journal when it's hard for me to do self-care. When I'm home from work and I don't want to move, instead of scrolling mindlessly or calling a friend to distract me, I'll simply grab my notes and just free write. Maybe it's me cursing someone out in my head. Maybe it's me saying the things that I've always needed to say. But I allow that true and authentic release. Also, when my mind is restless at night and I can't take my mind into the different subconscious states to actually relax and go to sleep, I know that there's something I need to release. I think it, in a way, is a reconnection back to my spirit and my intuition forever, for a very long time, even till this day, I, I've always been afraid of the dark. And I would always go to sleep with a TV or some kind of sound on because it would make me feel less alone. And the thoughts that I had in my head would kind of eventually go away if I paid attention to whatever sound was on the TV. Now that I've gotten older, I realize that going to sleep with the TV on isn't necessarily a good way to go to sleep. So I don't quite like it, but when I have my days, like recently, yesterday, when my mind is just constantly hearing, you know, different scenarios, the ways that I've responded, things that I can't let go, I know that it's time for me to sit in the dark and journal and allow whatever spirit is, you know, weighing heavy on my chest to kind of be released and take back the power of my mind in those moments so that I can, you know, give myself rest. And yeah, I think when we're in these different seasons, like especially now as summer is approaching its end and it's back to school era, there's this new energy of like a fresh start the air is getting crisp the wind is getting a little bit cooler I always think of back to school time as a way to start anew and as I've become an adult and of course I'm not in school anymore all I have are these little cycles and remembrance of different times and seasons and how they used to um, make my body respond but I'm just constantly working all I do is work so there is no real rest there is no real summertime there is no real vacation for me and that has really brought me to a point of fatigue that feels real like it, it's a real tiredness like I, I work a lot I work hard it's naturally in me to do that But when you don't have any reprieve because you're trying to push this needle of being a creator, it can feel like, damn, when is it ever going to end? And you reach this resentment, you reach this rut that makes you feel disconnected from your creativity and your authenticity. And you start to develop this toxic positivity, like everything is going to be okay. And the messages, they get empty. And if I am really trying to be of service, I can't have that. It's not even that I can't, because I can. I can be like just that YouTuber that makes videos every day of just random bullshit and angel numbers, but that's not the journey that I'm trying to take this thing. And even if this is as small as it is now, I have to do it right. Because years down the line, I'm not going to live forever, you know, I'm not going to be here. I want to make sure that how my voice lives on is in a way that is genuinely helping people. And how can I do that if I'm not really showing up or if I'm not having enough energy to give it what it needs? So yeah, that's, that's really been my truth. You know, I'm, I'm really grateful to, to be able to connect with so many people like 
I read the DMs, I read the emails, I have a love for you guys that's so real. When I'm not right and when I'm not feeling it in my spirit, I can't give that to you guys because, I mean, I wouldn't want that shit, you know? And I figured, like, okay, like, if I can't give the fake toxic positivity, everything's going to be okay, even though it is. But you know what I mean. If I can't give that, then what do I give? And it's just, I have to give wherever I'm at right now. And hopefully, you know, it will feel, you'll, you'll resonate with it because it is an authentic place. And then when you get to this place in your journey where you are just at a wall and you feel like you're just walking and doing the motions and having to work and having to go day by day giving it your all it's like you're gonna need that extra push so hopefully you hear the authenticity of my struggle of my just fatigue and know that even though I am at this place that is imperfect and a little bit lost and very jaded I'm not in a place in my life where my relationships are great, you know. I'm not in a place where all of my ducks are in a row. There's so many things that are changing in my life. But yet and still, I choose to be of service and I choose to show up. And so if I can do it at this place in my life with everything that's going on and (laughs) when things aren't looking pretty, my hair's not done, hasn't been done in a very long time, but I don't care, (laughs) you know, you can still have something worthy of sharing and it can still be used. And yeah, I can feel some of us slowly getting out of our fatigue and into this new energy or a fresh start. And this is a normal part of our energy cycles. And when you're home from a long day of work and it's just like really hard to do anything else but sit down and sloth and sleep and maybe eat something... I want you to know that I feel you, but it doesn't make us feel better because maybe it's like I feel you. Some days I do the same thing, trust me, but it doesn't necessarily make us feel good when we're not able to give even a slither of energy to ourselves. Maybe we can find at least one little spark little speck of something for ourselves at the end of every day like putting essential oils in our shower to heighten the relaxation I don't know about you guys but my favorite essential oil aroma is geranium like I don't know if you guys have ever like had geranium just by itself and not mixed in any other fragrance but geranium is so like potent it's so powerful it's so soothing I feel it relaxes me way more than any lavender or eucalyptus there's just something about it that really resonates with my spirit and I put it in my showers I put it in my oils I lather it all over me because it really keeps me feeling safe I don't know it's just the right vibration I guess or maybe giving yourself something sweet before bed hey it's a guilty pleasure or a good book that feeds your journey, or journal, like I said, because the level of nurturing and pouring back to yourself to take ownership and be yours before you're anyone else's is really within reach when you shift your attention to acknowledge it, or when you do the things that help you remember who you are, where you are, and the power that you have to pour back into yourself. Yeah think that is all that I have. I hope that this episode was able to give you something today. Um, Thank you all so much for watching and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, night, or whenever you're seeing this. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe and I will see you guys in my next one.